Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and today we're playing through part two of Massive Darkness. So we have a gigantic high troll that's shown up in the uh, near the exit essentially where we need to go for this uh, quest. We need to actually get this key in the library and then get the heck out. But then this gigantic lesser roaming monster showed up here, the high troll in the middle of everything, making our lives a little bit more miserable and also scaring away well, it scares me in general, just a the shadow there. Uh, so what we got is we have Whisper currently in the room here with a bunch of goblin warriors. One is a minion uh, in the front and then the boss is in the back. Bunch of treasure chests around. We need this library key here and we also need to get the heck out of this place. The wizard, our battle wizard, is on the outside of the door in the hallway area right now, but in the shadows. One thing to note with him though is that in the last video, in the pinned comment, I made some, I, I made a comment about something that was caught in terms of a counterattack. This, this mob cannot counterattack uh, our wonderful battle wizard. And the reason for that is they would try, when I, when I went ahead and made my shots in from range, they would have tried to activate a, in a counterattack. And when they try to activate, they try to attack the individual in the area, or they try to attack in general, but this character's melee. So because of that, nothing's gonna happen. And they won't target Whisper. They're trying to attack uh, our battle wizard. So. In other words, they try to attack, they can't do it, then they try to move. But the thing is, apparently, when there's a hero in the same area as the enemies, uh, as the enemies, they cannot leave that spot. So in other words, you can actually use this as a strategy to kind of keep the enemies busy. Essentially, it's almost like they're fighting, they're in combat, they can't just leave. Which is awesome, because it can keep our ranged characters from a distance still able to take pot shots and not have counter or counter attacks come after them. So, in essence, I put Ilias's, um HP in the last video it was at four and I'm now moving it back up to five just so that you guys know he's back because he wouldn't have suffered that one damage I gave him so now we can get going with this playthrough so we're going to start off by moving the player token over from whisper over to our battle wizard here and he's going to go ahead and start off the activation now the first thing I'm going to do is use this special skill called zap uh, and it says, once per activation, roll a yellow die and deal the number of wounds equal to the number of swords to one enemy in line of sight at range 0 to 2. So I can roll one yellow dice. There's no defense from the enemy on this one, and I'm just going to target the minion. I can only hit one enemy, so it will be nothing. I got nothing? Okay, so I got nothing on that roll. That's not good. So that was my free attack, which didn't land. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to have my wizard go ahead and uh, attack with his staff. So basically we have his staff attack is one yellow dice. It says attack bam gives me a plus one on my sword. So I'm really hoping to get that when I roll. If we're going ahead and attacking the goblin warriors, we got to take their defense into account. So two blue dice is going to be rolled as well as the one yellow that I'm rolling. And we're hoping for good things here. Ah, oh, so close. I almost had them. So they block the first attack. So let's go to the second one. They block the second attack. Oh my gosh, I gotta go for three here. And they block the third. Absolutely nothing I could do there. Insane. So this is what happens when you don't have that many good items at the start of a game. <laughs> so that ended like that, which is not good. So what's gonna end up happening is the counterattack's gonna happen, but guys, just like I said a few seconds ago, the counterattack won't happen because Elias is actually outside of the room and those monsters can't leave that space to use their melee attack against him. So everything is a wash and there's no damage going to Elias. So the counterattack uh, part of the hero activation is done. And now we move over to Whisper. Now Whisper has some work to do. We need to be using our attack of just one yellow die. Now the good thing with Whisper is he's got a really cool ability called the Master of Shadows. And it says the hero is considered in shadow mode for their first attack of each activation. When you're considered in shadow mode, even when there's a torch in the room, it means he's got that ability, which means we get the shadow mode skill, which is the attack, when he's attacking, the defender is going to lose a shield off their dice roll. So that's good news, because I'm rolling one yellow against two blue, like we tried to do with uh, the wizard there and it didn't work out, but at least I get to minus one shield on the first attack. So here's hoping that this lands. And it does perfectly. So this will take away the shield from them, basically leaving us with one attack, which is enough to kill the first minion. Awesome job, Whisper, way to do it. So one XP up on him, that's great news. All right, so that's the first attack. Now we need one more list to land, but this time we do not get the benefit of Master of Shadows as it only affects the first attack. Here we go. That's not what we wanna see. So now we have to make a choice here. Uh, in terms of focus, um, he's gonna be coming after me regardless. 
Um, I could also move. Moving wouldn't be a bad idea right now because I don't want Whisper to die yet. So what I could do is play a little bit of chicken. Oh, but I can't leave the room. I'm, I'm in a room with a monster. I can't just leave. So here, I gotta go ahead and use my third action to attack and just hope for the best. Come on. Oh, that's way too much defense. There's no way I'm getting through that. So uh, that's all she wrote on that one. Now, this counterattack is gonna happen because this one, right, you know, I was trying to hit him with Whisper or with Whisper, and she has uh, really, really angered, I guess, the uh, the mob boss, and that mob boss now is going to attack. And they attack with three dice, which is ridiculous. Three yellow dice, that is, which is insane. The good thing with Whisper is, has two blue dice, so there's a chance I could roll extremely well and hopefully block all this, but fingers are crossed, this could go south. Um, Oh my gosh, okay, I am re-rolling that because that's completely cocked. Like, I don't even know which side of the dice that's on, so I'm re-rolling this one. I have a chance to block this, and I do. So we got two swords and two shields, so we're all good. Whew, just barely. Okay, so that's the counter and that's essentially the whole thing. That was the whole phase all the way through. So what do we do when we're done our activations for our heroes? We move right into the enemy's phase, which is essentially just reactivating all the enemies again. So all the enemies of the board are gonna activate. So we'll just start in order. We'll do the one that's in here. So again, I'm gonna to have to deal with another attack from this guy, which is terrible. So here's hoping that I can block this Goblin Warrior boss. And I wasn't able to that time. We got, th we got more than enough clean dice there. So three against one, there's no way I can block that. So Whisper has succumbed to the first death of the game so in the uh, the beginning of the activation i can spend a life bringer at the beginning of a round i should say i can spend a token to bring him back or bring her back sorry uh but i'm gonna have to wait on that so anyway that attack was successful and done now we move over to the only other active uh, or other monster on the board which is our lesser roaming monster the high troll and he's going to activate by first trying to attack anything in his square because he's a melee character there is nobody there so then he's going to move one and then from there, he's going to try to attack again, but nobody's there, so he's going to move one again, and that's the end of his activation. So he is slowly creeping up, and you can see his horrific hands uh, are getting ever closer, and his shadow is getting ever creepier. So that is not good. We'll give you a nice little zoom in there of that shot, because that looks pretty cool. All right, so that essentially is that. Uh, the next step is the experience phase. It doesn't really matter for us because again, we only have one experience and one experience. So we don't have five, we can't buy any extra skills yet. The event phase is next. So we're gonna go to the event deck right here, flip this over and hope it doesn't do anything terrible to us. Unexpected monster. You, are you kidding me? What am I, what have I done to myself? <laughs> Spawn a roaming monster card. Are you, this has gotta be some kind of cruel joke. Place the enemy in a zone with the token of the current level plus one. Oh my, this is the exact, it's a different, it's a different wording, but it's literally the exact same card. And I'm not kidding you, I shuffled these cards. So uh, my luck is going downhill, oh my gosh. So we just pulled, if you're talking about an unedited, unstaged playthrough, you're going to see it right here. The Org Mage <laughs> has now come out onto the board and I can tell you, I think we've got problems, like serious issues happening now. Um, this is not good. <laughs> now, where is this guy? Who Who is he? Oh, it's this guy here. Very cool. So this guy is the Org Mage. So he has now joined the fray into the dungeon and uh, to make my life miserable. What does he do? Against attacks for one or more zones away, Org Mage gets some defensive buffs. Oh, so you want to get in the same square with him to make attacks. You don't want to attack him from distance. He gets, he has a lot of attack. Oh, wow. And if you are shooting him from range, you're going to get hit hardcore by the magic. He gets two yellow dice, one red. If you get up in his face, he's going to have two melee dice against you. And he's rolling two green blue dice. That's insane. That is insanely high. The green dice are like capable of pulling off combinations like this. No, like this. There's like three shields on one side. That is insane. I don't know what, I, I need to get some miracle weapons in this dungeon here or things are going to go south really fast. Okay. Um, well, this is fun regardless. So again, don't want to forget about the treasure card. That's not all guys. So you do have to pull a treasure card as well. So let's see what we do. Oh my gosh, he's holding a battle axe. 
So now he has the ability, and again, it correlates with a uh, characteristic or a die that he actually has. So that means he's going to get this buff enhancement. Plus, he's going to get the or he's going to get this die enhancement. Plus, he's going to get the um, enhancement of the bam here, which allows me to or allows him on uh, on attacks. The defender gets attack minus one for this counter attack. Oh my goodness! <gasps> oh, that's actually a good thing. Defender gets. Defender gets attack minus one for this counter attack. I don't know. It it all sounds bad. It, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna worry about that when I actually see it. But I'll keep it. I'll keep it visible because it will apply when we actually fight him. Holy, that is insane. Okay, so we've got some serious problems on the on the map right now. Okay, so that's that. That was fun, right? Okay, so that's the roaming monster. Um, and then now we end the phase. So now that we're in the phase, we're going to go ahead and take the first player token, bring it over to Whisper. Uh, it is the beginning of a new round, so we're going to spend one heart from the Lifebringer, which says, essentially, at the start of a round, if there are any dead heroes, remove one token, which we just did. If you can't, uh, the if you, uh, from this, remove one token from this card to resurrect and fully heal a dead hero. So, dead hero fully resed and back up, which means we can get our... And again, I never moved his stuff down to zero where it should have been when he died. This goes up to five again. Uh, so, geez, this is, this is scary. I'm a little scared. Okay, so, <clears throat> wow, uh, I've got a lot of work to do here, and I'm not too, I'm not feeling too comfortable with it, about this. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead with Whisper first. Job or task of the day is to go after this. We don't want to forget again about the Master of Shadows ability, so we're gonna use that, which gives us the minus one defense. I'm hoping that's enough to swing things. So again, one yellow die for this for this long sword against the Goblin Warriors and their short sword, uh, or sorry, it doesn't matter the short sword, against their two blue dice. So here's hoping, guys. And again, they get minus one on their shield, so I hope this pans out for me. Please, please, please. they do. Look at that, guys. We got it. We got it. We got lucky. Minus one shield takes away their shield. We got their one attack. That means, and that mob boss is only one health. So we have now killed, uh, finally killed something, which means the cool thing is this short sword is right here. So this short sword is now... In this area, I'm gonna have to double check to see whether or not I get to pick it up right away or not. Um, but this one here is dead, so I'm gonna put him off to the side. Don't ever wanna see him again. Um, so that's that. Uh, and of course, we don't wanna forget about XP. So we killed a boss, so we get uh, we get uh, three XP to all heroes. That's the really cool thing. So that means he's gonna jump to four, and that's all heroes, guys. That's a very di a big, big difference. When you kill minions of a party or of a mob, you only get one XP to the hero that killed it. But if you kill a mob boss, everyone in the party gets the XP. If you kill an agent, everyone in the party gets four HP. If you kill a roaming monster, everyone gets five HP. So it really starts adding up. But we're not, we're not at five yet. I really want to get to five because it starts giving us the ability to unlock some of our extra skills, which we really badly need because we have so many monsters in play. It's insane. Not really a lot of monsters, just a really a lot of strong ones. Uh, so the one thing that I don't know, and I believe when I, let's see, yeah, so his first action, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this guy is dead, by the way. I'm taking him out of there right away. <laughs> we just killed him. We got his XP. So again, what I'm going to do is my second action is I'm going to pick everything up. This is where things get fun. This is really, really where the game kind of starts to shine. It has that Diablo kind of feel where you're just hoarding treasure like a crazy person. So you can basically go ahead and pick up everything in the area. So I get the short sword. I also get three treasure boxes, right? So you think, oh, that's not really that exciting. It is, because when you get three treasure boxes, it allows me to go ahead and pull three treasure cards. I'm not joking you. You literally get one card for every single treasure chest you pulled. So now I'm gonna literally just go bit crazy pulling stuff out of these chests. So I've got a great sword here. And this again is my second action because I attacked with my first action, killed him. Picking up is uh, considered a part of the movement action. And I still have one more movement inside of that action to do something else. So I could even move into this area. Uh, but anyway, so short sword, great sword. Um, I get three total. Because this one was off the uh, this was off the actual boss itself. I got a wooden ring. This gives me defense. That's useful, and a dagger. So nothing too too crazy. But if you'll notice, there's differences there. So this again can be slotted into. So I could have a better sword with a dagger in hand. Um, but again, if I do so, I lose my defense die. It's nice having the long sword and getting an extra defense die. So that's kind of tough. 
Uh, ooh, the dagger, shadow mode, attack. Blank results get a plus one sword. Hey, you know what? This needs to be on Whisper. With that first attack Whisper has with the Master of Shadows ability to go in the shadows, if, he's in sh if she's in shadow mode, she's going to get plus one all blank results, which means all of my terrible dice rolling is going to finally pay off for me, which is awesome. So I'm going to probably take this. Now, uh, when I go ahead and pick things up, you actually have to use another action to organize or change things. Um, so that's kind of the fun part. So right now I've picked... I've, I've picked things up, which is part of the movement action. I still have one more movement action to do, and I can show you that so that there's no confusion. The movement section right here says, spend two movement points on moving the hero one zone, opening a door uh, for a whole chamber when it's first revealed, or picking up all tokens in this zone. So I only picked up all tokens, so I still have one more movement point. So I could, like I was saying, just take Whisper and drop him here, because I want to get further in. Then I have one more action remaining because I killed, then I used a movement action to pick up, and then I used my final uh, part of that movement action to move here. Now I have my third action left. The question really becomes, do I pick up more stuff like a greedy person, or do I transmute some of this stuff, which you guys have never seen in this playthrough yet, in order to get higher level treasure, which would be kind of cool, or do I try to... Um, or do I try to equip something? Well, you know what, at the end of the day, I kind of want to keep certain things. Like the wooden ring is really, really handy. This dagger is really, really handy. So, if I use, um, discard three equipment cards. Hmm. Organize, trade. I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and I think I might transmute. I want to keep my long sword. Oh, no, I don't. I, oh, actually, you know what? I can keep my long sword and put the dagger in my hand. So having the dagger and the wooden ring would be a really great combo. So maybe I don't want to transmute yet. Maybe I just want to equip. I think I'm just going to equip. I'm not going to be greedy. I'm going to leave some stuff back for the battle wizard to pick up. So I'm going to take the dagger. We're going to go ahead and put the dagger into... So we're basically using our third action as a reorganize action, which allows me to pull things out of my backpack back pocket essentially and put it into play as much as I want. The wooden ring's kind of like one of those items that's like always in effect, so I always get the uh, plus one, or plus one on the uh, on the BAMs, so that's gonna be huge. Um, and later on, when I maybe get a third one that I feel like actually getting rid of, I'll transmute them on a separate action. Or maybe I'll let you guys decide what you think I should do. Maybe I should transmute these. If you guys don't know what transmuting means, it means to take three equipment cards that you have, transmute them together into a pile, discard them, and pull a treasure from a higher tier, like one higher tier than you're currently at. So in other words, I could pull a treasure two card for discarding three of these levels. Now, just so you also understand, if I had a level one, a level two, and a level three items, and I try to transmute them, I only get uh, the lowest, it only counts for the lowest level of those three, plus, uh, I'm trying to think about that. Yeah, the lowest level, uh, would be the only one I get plus one. So it'd be a two, essentially. Okay, so here we go. Uh, what are we gonna do now? So let's uh, let's leave it like that. I reorganized, we're done. That's all three actions of Whisper. Now we have our Battle Wizard. Now the cool thing is, uh, the Battle Wizard's within two spaces of this guy. So I could take some pot shots at him. Although if I do so, then his counter whatever activates and he comes running at me like a madman and I'm not ready for the kind of pain he's about to inflict on me. So I think I'm gonna run like a coward. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually, let me think about this. I am going to, I'm going to run into here. So one, I'm gonna use my, I'm using movement for my first action. So one, two, then I'm gonna pick up all items in this area. So I'm gonna pick up three treasure chests so we're gonna discard those treasure chests and pull three cards for our wizard. Oh my gosh, the armor of life. Of all the cards to get, that is something that I need. What do I get here? What does it say? Defense on BAMs, the hero may heal one. That's incredible. Okay, so that's a nice one to get. What else we got? Um, the scepter, magic weapon, awesome. Oh wait, it's, exactly, it's actually worse than my staff. Because it doesn't have, an, it has the exact same dice rolling capability, but doesn't have the enhancement. That's that's garbage. That's one I'm gonna probably want to get rid of. And then the third chest. 
Ooh, what is, oh, this isn't good. Trap chest, acid cloud, trap. Resolve this card if the hero just picked up a treasure token, rats. Otherwise, discard it and draw the next. All heroes in the same zone take one wound. Are you kidding me? What are the chances that we, oh, worst. Um, and then draw a treasure card of the same level. Discard this card. Oh, that's just terrible. So there's nothing we can do. We just have to suck it up. We take a damage each. If things weren't already going bad enough for us, we had some poisonous gas come out of the trap, and now we get to pull another treasure card because, um, you know, maybe there's something good in this box. Oh, ironic. A healing potion. Classic. Okay, so a consumable healing potion. Discard this card during the hero's activation to heal up to two. Well, that's going to be useful because... Thanks to the, uh, that's gotta be the cruelest treasure chest I've ever seen. Like poison me, hurt me, and then give me a healing potion. Like really? Whoever put that together deserves uh, a slow clap. Okay, so we've got three different items here. Uh, the armor's awesome. The healing potion's awesome. The scepter is completely and utterly useless. Uh, but now I have one more action left. Knowing full well that these guys are going to come visit really soon, I should probably put the armor of life on. Um, Yes, I'm going to probably put the Armor of Life on. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one. So it's going to give me a blue. It's going to allow me to heal, which is the biggest thing. So I'm going to swap this one out. Uh, so I'm doing a reorganize, guys, if you're not familiar. So that's that. So now I have two useless weapons. And then I have this lesser healing potion, which is a consumable that can just sit out in the open. It doesn't need to be up in my hands anywhere. It can just sit in my pile and I can choose to discard it at any point in time. So that's what we have. And because uh, Elias did not actually attack anyone during this turn, there's no counter attack because he never, he didn't draw any aggro, he didn't really anger anybody. So that means we are done our hero's turn fully. All right, so we're moving to the enemy's phase, which means they're all gonna activate because they all hate us so much. So the gigantic massive high troll is trying to find us in the main area here. He's gonna attack everybody in his zone, no one is there, he's gonna move. And then he's going to attack everyone that's there, but no one's there. And then he's going to move. Now, in terms of targeting and where he's going, you're kind of probably wondering, like, where, where is he going to go when he gets here? Does he know that we're in here? Does he not know that we're in here? It's all based on the, um, on the target priority that we talked about in the previous video. So heroes in range with the most XP. Uh, so right now, that would be nobody. Uh, then it would be, this is target priority by the way, and then hero in line of sight with the most XP, and then this is hero in a light zone with the most XP. So that's the one that he would be going after right now, because we're not in line of sight, we're not in range. He's going towards a space with light. The sad news of the day is every single room has a torch in it in this area, so it's like a trap for us to go in there and grab all that treasure, knowing full well that he is coming in here. Now, if these were all in darkness, the next targeting priority order says, to go to the starting zone. So this is where the this is why they're called roaming monsters because if you happen to be in a shaded area, this room you can't actually get into, this monster would basically just bounce around these main hallways all day long looking for you and you could kind of pop out and take pot shots at it. But because we're in a torchlit area, he knows we're in here. Like, I don't know, maybe he can see the shadows of our reflection. Like, look at that. He can see us, our gigantic bodies are showing up on the tile. So of course he knows we're in here. Uh, so yeah, that's essentially what they do. So he, I've activated him. We're gonna go ahead and activate the Org Mage. So attack in the position, there's no one there. Uh, again, he can attack with magic, so that's nasty. He's gonna go ahead and move, attack again, and then move. So there's nobody in range to be hit yet, but they're on their way. So anyway guys, hope you guys are enjoying what you're seeing. Like and share, let me know in the comments below if you saw anything I missed, and I will see you in the next episode. Thanks again for watching and keep